Our next speaker is Lindsay Felth. The opioid epidemic has ravaged American families. Opioid overdoses claim 200 lives per day, and this number rose 20% during the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, opioids are still the best tools we have to treat pain. We need to do better. But in order to do this, we need more information about how opioids work. This is the topic of my dissertation. How do we make opioids safer? When an opioid goes into your body, it's a little bit like a game of pool. Imagine that the white cue ball represents the opioid, and when it enters your body, it hits a stack of solid and striped balls. These balls go flying everywhere and hit each other. Now imagine that the solid balls enact changes that reduce a person's pain. And in order to maintain pain relief, a ball has to make it into this upper pocket, denoted by a star. But what about the striped balls? It turns out that they matter too. The striped balls represent regulation that occurs in the cells activated by opioids. I hypothesize that the motion of the striped balls is necessary in order to get a ball into this pocket, maintaining pain relief. My goal is to help develop an opioid that does this, maintain pain relief, because this lowers a person's exposure that they have to opioids, therefore lowering their risk of overdose and addiction. In order to study this, I use some really special types of mice. I use one type of mouse that has these striped balls represented by the regulation, and one type of mouse that does not have these striped balls represented by the regulation. Then I train both types of mice how to press a button in order to earn opioids. Then I took their opioids away and put them into mousy rehab for two weeks. <laughs> After that, I modeled their relapse by putting them back into the same environment that they had gotten their opioids in to begin with and gave them their opioids back and measured how many times they pressed this button to try to earn opioids. When I did this, I found that the mice with these striped balls pressed the button less during this model of relapse, and the mice without the striped balls pressed the button more. This means that the mice that have these striped balls, the regulation, are less likely to develop symptoms of addiction. The problem is that the pharmaceutical industry, when developing new types of opioids, only focuses on the pain reduction, the solid balls, and not the regulation, the striped balls. Much like in this bottom panel, this does not result into a ball getting into the pocket, and it does not maintain pain relief. This means people are at an increased likelihood of developing addiction or succumbing to overdose. My research will help guide the development of safer opioids by taking into account this regulation. Because after all, developing a drug that doesn't take into account this regulation is a lot like playing a game of pool with only half the balls. There's just no point. Thank you. So I'd like to understand, um, how did you decide to get started on this research topic? What was the um, motivation? Yeah, so my undergrad I did in biochemistry, and I actually studied transcription initiation in E. coli, which was very far removed from public health. So when I went to grad school, I really wanted a topic that would contribute to some sort of human health problem. Um, and then I was fortunate to find this great lab that did opioid research, and uh, yeah, that's how I got here. So. Well, that's cool. Um, assuming you're not in the lab 24-7, <laughs> what's your favorite thing to do when you're not? Yeah, um, when I'm not in the lab, I like to just be out in nature and get fresh air and just get some distance from all of the experiments that don't work and long hours and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so I really like going hiking with my husband and my two Australian shepherds. So I love watching them swim and go through the mountains and stuff like that. It's really great to be out, out of the lab. And <laughs> I got a Nazi too. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> Yeah, they're, yeah, okay, fun is one way to call it. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot, they, they take a lot of, of work. They right. need a lot of energy, but that's why we got two, because they entertain each other, so. Yeah, okay. Um, th this, this and probably things that you've done before, you know, in terms of uh, getting more and more uh, expert at science communication, how has that helped uh, your uh, career as a graduate student, and how do you think it's gonna help your career later on? Yeah, I think as graduate students, we spend so much time in the weeds doing experiments, looking at protocols, and there's all these details we have to keep track of. And sometimes it's really good to come up from the weeds and just remember what project you're working on and why it motivates you to come to the lab every day. Mm -hmm. 
And also, um, you know, I presented this to my family and they're like, oh, I think I understand what you do now. So <laughs> as scientists, I think it's our job to try and be able to communicate in a way that other people can understand and also get excited about science. Okay, yeah, no, that, that's a great point. The, um, I had that issue also explaining my research to my family. Um, <laughs> it doesn't go over well. Yeah. Um, the, um, the, 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 what keeps you motivated? I mean, you talked about you know, going back to the lab and, and you know, there are highs and there are lows, right? Uh, and so how do you uh, manage that? That's a good question. I think uh, because PhD programs are so long, you just have to have this attitude of like, I'm going to get it done. Like, I'm going to see this through, and it's up to me. And I think that attitude in combination with a great support system, liking where you work, having a family, and having hobbies mm -hmm. that you can mentally detach from it for a while so that your whole life isn't just about your work. You have something else to look forward to, like hiking with your Aussies or <laughs> cooking or whatever. Yeah. So. Work-life balance, right? Work-life balance. All you right. need a little bit at least, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> even in grad school. Thank you. Thank you very much.